Hello, this is Katie Colleen here. Welcome back, Colleen Clan. Or if you're new, then come join the family. Today I'll be showing you how to make a cosplay armor with only sewable foam and fabric. Today I'll be making Lucy's Grand Magic Games outfit from Fairy Tail. I'll be showing you how I made the collar and shoulder armor for this cosplay. So the first thing we have to do is pattern. Now for the pattern, I'm going to be using saran wrap and I'm going to be covering the areas that I want to pattern. So for this cosplay, I will be covering my shoulders and neck area with saran wrap. The pattern I am making happens to be completely symmetrical, so I only need to actually cover half of my shoulder and neck. After covering with saran wrap, then take a masking tape and go over that saran wrap with the masking tape. You'll notice here that I am struggling. I am, I am struggling to pattern my back. <laughs> so may this not only be a tutorial on how to make armor, but also a life lesson in learning when to ask for help. Now once I have this masking tape shell, I'm going to take a Sharpie and just kind of draw out where I want the collar to be and where I want the shoulder piece to be and just give an idea of the designs and size. Once you have this done, you can take scissors and just cut off the saran wrap. Next, I'm going to cut the shoulder piece and the neck piece apart. And now I'm going to transfer these patterns onto paper. That's gonna be a little bit easier to cut stuff out. So for the collar piece, I can just transfer it to paper as is. Now the shoulder armor is a little bit different. Now you'll notice that it has a curve for your shoulder and also a slight curve around the back of your shoulder as well. What we're gonna do is take scissors and we're just gonna cut a piece straight down the center of that shoulder. And you'll notice that now it can spread out. I also made one for the back of the shoulders. Now with the extra cut, this all lays flat and it can be transferred to paper. Now I'm also going to try out these paper patterns and make sure they fit. Now the collar piece you can just put around your neck, nothing special there. With the shoulder piece you are going to want to tape together that curvature and make sure it fits correctly. And then we can finally take this pattern and put it onto our fabrics and foam. Now let's transfer this pattern onto the foam. I am using a sewable foam that I got from Joann's. This foam is a lot more flexible and a lot more soft than other foams. It kind of reminds me of like packaging foams, you know, the flat like foam sheets that they put in packaging. So I'm going to be cutting out the collar piece and the shoulder piece in the foam. Now we'll need the fabric. So I am using this stretch purple fabric. It's the same thing I used for the top. So the color will match perfectly between the two. Something you must keep in mind here. You need to have a lot of seam allowance when cutting out the fabric. This fabric has to wrap entirely around the foam. I added about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch to my pattern just for seam allowance since there is a significant thickness to the foam. You're going to want to cut two of the shoulder pieces and two of the collar pieces. This needs to be completely lined so that the foam can sit inside. It's like a foam sandwich. You're gonna have fabric, foam, and then fabric. Now this specific armor that I'm making also has this gold trim to it, this gold bias. So I'll be cutting that out as well. I'm going to cut it out the same as I would any other bias tape. So I am cutting out these strips at a 45 degree angle. This helps the fabric bend to the curvature better than it would if you were just cutting it along the straight edges. I did about an inch and a half to two inches wide here. And now to attach that to the purple fabric. So I am going to attach one side of the bias to one side of our purple fabric. And now once that is sewn, we will have this trim kind of lined along the edge of this fabric. So I'm going to take that bias and sew it to the outer edge of our second collar piece. Once this is done, you'll have a little bit of a pocket and this is where the foam will sit. At this point, I checked that the foam still fit how I wanted it to, and I made sure that I didn't have too much or too little fabric. Now for this particular pattern, there happens to be trim on both the top and the bottom of the collar. So we know what to do now. We're gonna take that trim and we're going to sew it to one side and then to the other. So I'm just leaving a few inches on either end of the collar and that's how I'm going to squeeze that foam in. This foam is very bendable, very movable, and it should fit very snugly over the foam. This is why you had to check that you didn't have too much fabric. It should be a very nice fit. 
Now I'm going to do a top stitch. So I'm going to do a straight stitch just over the edge so that the foam is sewn into the fabric. I'm gonna sew completely through this foam sandwich to make sure that the foam doesn't move around or twist around inside the fabric. I want it all sewn together. While I'm doing this top stitch, I'm also going to close up those loose ends. I'm just tucking in the little ends and then sewing over it with the straight stitch. I did do the straight stitch for both the inside of the collar and the outside. And with those top stitches done, we have our collar. Okay, but what about decorative pieces to armor? So there are quite a few decorative designs on Lucy's Grand Magic Games armor. And because this is a sewable foam, I am doing an applique stitch. I've done a few different videos on how to do an applique stitch, so I'm just going to link those in the description down below and you can check them out if you want to know more. So if you wanna know how to do an applique, please check out those videos. Otherwise, I will be moving on to the shoulder armor. Now the shoulder armor is a lot of the same story as the collar. We do, however, still have those cuts we put in for it to lay flat. This is called a dart. And a dart is where you just kind of take in just this little triangle of fabric, just a little triangle, it's not a full seam. So what I'm doing is I am just going to kind of lay the, the two sides of the cut together and I'm just gonna sew along that side there. Now I'm gonna have to do the same with the foam as well. So I'm going to take the foam and I'm going to put together our cuts, pin them together, and then sew the little triangle together. And once this is done, it should have all the shape it needs. So after sewing the darts, I found that I actually was four inches off and how wide this was supposed to be. And so, if this all seems a little messy, that's because it is. It's because I did like four renditions of this pattern and none of them were really the right size because I couldn't tape my back. And I am, you know, every day learning my lesson of being able to uh, ask for help with things. So for you guys, you know, following along, please ignore this back seam. It was so I could take out the uh, four inches difference in my pattern and how it fit me. Let's move on with the tutorial. And we know what to do from here. So I'm going to cut out more bias from the gold. I'm gonna sew it to one end of the purple shoulder armor fabric, sew it to the other end of the purple shoulder armor fabric. I'm going to slide my foam in, and then I'm going to sew together that top piece. I'm gonna do the top stitch, and again, I did applique stitching. There were quite a few designs on this shoulder armor. So now how are we going to actually attach this armor in a way that we can wear it? So I decided to use sew on snaps. And this also was more of a safety mechanism. As you'll see later, there is quite a long tail piece that I add to the armor. And I was really worried that this would get caught in the door, in the escalator, whatever it be. And then this armor would strangle me to my death. Same with Velcro, I just didn't want to get Velcro in my hair. So do consider if, if the Velcro for your armor is in range of your wig. So I did two snaps to hold the collar in place. So next is the shoulder armor attachments. So for this, I just put the shoulder armor on under the collar and I kind of looked to see where would the shoulder armor connect to the collar piece. So I'm using two sew on snaps and they're just going to snap on the top of the shoulder piece to the underside of the collar piece. So now the armor is done. There is a little bit of a bonus piece for this particular cosplay. Lucy has this long, I don't even know what to call it, potentially a compartment to hold snacks. Now I'm just gonna take this long strip of fabric. It looks like it went to about the back of her knees. Just get a rough idea of how much you want. And then I went ahead and cut it out. I did make sure it went to a point as it does in her canon outfit and at a point. It has this kind of baggy look. So we're gonna recreate that as well. This is done with a gathering stitch. A gathering stitch is this very wide straight stitch. It's used the same way that you make ruffles. So I'm going to do two of these gathering stitches side by side, but not crossing each other on the very edge of this fabric. 
Then I'm going to take the spare thread, just gonna wrinkle up that fabric. And you'll see that it bunches up just like a ruffle, just like a ruffle, and now it's really thin at the top, but wider in the center, and it has that baggy look that we're going for. Now I'm also going to sew together these little tubes with the white fabric, which then flipped inside out. I have these nice little bands. Now the tube will just wrap around the end of our fabric there. I'm just gonna sew both sides of our band together, and then that'll hold it in place. Then I'm going to pull our drapey back piece through the bands, and I'm gonna do the same at the top and the bottom of this drapey piece. And then just for a little bit of extra support, I'm going to hand sew the little bands just so I know that they won't slide off throughout a convention day. They're firmly held in place. Finally, I'm going to sew this drapey piece to the back of our shoulder armor. This ended up being too much fabric for my sewing machine to handle. So I just hand sewed that on and then it has the same look as it does for her back drapey snack compartment thing. That is how I made my Lucy Heartphilia Grand Magic Games armor. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.